Welcome to Iceland Virtual 2021. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Virtual ISWAM 2021. Now we were in 14 session of the row. Thank you for joining. I'm Kisanti here again. We'll chair this session. And this afternoon, we will talk a lot about skin nutrition for ultimate beauty. With honorable, we here with us our first speaker, Dr. Alexander Terkoich, PhD from Ukraine. I will remind uh, to all participants, you can type your question through the live chat box during the session and speaker will answer it after the session. Now let's greet our first speaker. Good morning at Ukraine, Dr. Alexander. Hello. Hello, uh, yes. How are you? It's my uh, honor to be uh, chair your uh, session today. Thank you. Uh, well, as I have heard, yes, assalamu alaikum. Well, like you in, in Indonesia and uh, and good afternoon. <laughs> so yeah. we have a big difference in time. Yeah. And uh, but uh, anyway, it's my pleasure and honor uh, to give this lecture. And uh, I, I like this topic, and uh, for sure I like Indonesia. I was there last year, yes. and I hope. Well, not last, not twenty ninety years. And uh, I hope, I'm sure that everything will finish and the normal uh, times will uh, come back. Yes. And I'll come to Indonesia, especially to Bali for the next time. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, it's our pleasure. But at least I'm, I'm happy to, to give the lecture online. Yes, uh, thanks for God we are still allowed to meet even virtually like this. <laughs> I'm so very grateful and so glad to have you here. Okay, to know more about Dr. Alexander, I will share his curriculum vitae. Dr. Alexander is associate professor at Lviv National Medical University in Ukraine, annual professor of dermatology, University of Rome G. Marconi, board certified specialist in dermatovenerology, oncology, aesthetic medicine, chairman of the European Guidelines Committee for Dermatology and Phenology World Health Academy, as CEO and founder of private clinic Med Estelle at Lviv, Ukraine, and scientific coordinator of EMWC Monaco. Dr. Alexander will present the topic about succinic and hyaluronic acid. How can make skin tissue 10 years younger. It's an interesting topic. Dr. Alexander, you may start your lecture now. Time is you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, so, well, maybe not 10, maybe 12 or 11 or nine, but at least how to make it younger. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, dear participants. I'm, I'm glad and happy to be here with you. And uh, my lecture will be about how to reduce the age and how to reduce it because um, okay we have a lot of time so we can make some small philosophies uh, a lot of companies when they are selling their um, devices their drug uh, they all try to ensure us that uh, we are uh, that if we will use uh, their devices or their their fillers, their biorevitalizants, and their drugs. Uh, we and our patients, we will be younger, and we will be much more pretty, and everything will be okay. But uh, the biggest problem is that uh, not too much companies, not too much devices, 
have the real evidence based uh, evidence base of uh, of such uh, phrases uh, and we uh, it, it's really hard for us to be sure that when we are using something for our patient we will have the evidence based scientific evidence based result so i want to present you some methods uh, and some um, formulas that can help us to really to reduce the age uh, to make our patients younger to make them more beautiful more pretty more attractive more sexy and at least more young uh, and some chemical substances that have evidence-based uh, scientific evidence-based uh, background and let us start well, this is my disclosure, and and what we had to know when we are talking about the aging, how it goes. I mean, not how it goes from the point of view how we see it, because yes, how we see it, we see that one is young. After that, it's he she is a little bit older. And after that, more older, and after that, old and older and older and older. So, but from the scientific point of view, we have to understand that aging, uh, this is the synonym of inflammation. And even there is such a term called inflammation. Here you see that on this table, on the slide, how the inflammation, the physiological trend of inflammation is going. Uh, when we have sunburn or when we have the burn from the um, hot water or, okay, when we are making iron in, yes, and unfortunately we uh, connect the iron with our hand. It doesn't matter what we have. The age, the inflammation after the trauma, it looks like the quantity of TNF and interleukin one start to grow. After that, as a result, or maybe as a main idea, the interleukin six also start to grow. And when the level of interleukin six is on the top, our body start to produce interleukin 10 as antagonist of interleukin-6. And when the production of interleukin-10 start to grow, the quantity of interleukin-6 start to reduce. In some moment, they changed, and the quantity of interleukin is growing and growing and growing, and was that pro-inflammatory interleukin, such as 1, 6, and TNF, they are going down, and everything starts to be normalized and uh, the situation is normalized and everything is okay. Because interleukin 10 is one of the main anti-inflammatory cytokines. Uh, well, and how it's going with age. When we are aging, the level of interleukin 6 in our body start to grow. It's not so high as it is when we are talking about the sunburn or some other kind of burn, but it's higher than it have to be. And with age, it start to be higher and higher and higher. And our body, our, all the systems of our body, they lose the ability to produce the adequate, the enough quantity of interleukin 10. And due to that situation, that quantity of interleukin 10 uh, is not enough, the quantity of interleukin 6 is higher than it should be. And this is the result, this is the result of uh, that situation that, that is called inflammation. And uh, it's low grade inflammation. And due to this, we start to look older and older. Even more in southern countries, I mean, tropics, subtropics, tropics, uh, well, as well as Indonesia, yes, uh, it's even much more worse. Why? 
because not just that level of interleukin-6 is higher, but uh, there are a lot of um, there are a lot of situations that are really bad for our for our skin. For example, uh, first of all, it's sun, yes, and sun damage, sun exposure cause the photo aging and inflammation cause the aging and all this cause that we start to be elder, start to look elder and elder and elder. So what is possible to do with this? We have to understand that with the aging, well, one of the reasons of that inflammation and inflammation uh, are ROS. And ROS, the, the, the growing of the quantity of the ROS and the ROS activity, it causes the growing of the natural killers, it causes the growing of interleukin 1, 6, 8, yes, and many other bad things. And we have to do something to build some barrier. And we have to inject the skin something that will cause a anti-inflammation processes. Uh, what we were doing long years, we were injecting hyaluronic acid. You know, there is the history of boosters, yes? And this history uh, of the biorevitalizants and this history have at least 10 years or even maybe more. We were injecting hyaluronic acid, non-cross-linked, non-stabilized hyaluronic acid. And we were thinking that we will achieve some results. Sometimes we were achieving some good, well, not bad results, sometimes not. Uh, and the reason was described in 2015 uh, on the poster that was in the Florence in Italy, that uh, the results that we achieved from hyaluronic acid, uh, it is um, connected with the molecular weight of the hyaluronic acid. And that hyaluronic acid, if we need the good result, it should be high molecule of the hyaluronic acid. One of the best is uh, two and a half million deltons. Well, not just this, but it's one of the best. And when we inject in, for example, hyaluronic acid with the molecular weights, with the length of the chains, less than uh, 1 million uh, Dalton, it caused not the reducing of the aging, but it caused the growing of the aging. So now, nowadays, we know that uh, every, uh, every chain of hyaluronic acid that is less than 1 million, for example, 500, uh, thousand uh, uh, daltons, it will cause the inflammation. Uh, everything that is higher than one million, it will reduce the inflammation. And I don't want to tell that it's bad or it's good. It means that if we know this, that small chains cause inflammation and long chains reduce inflammation. We can play with this, and sometimes it's necessary to. Uh, to inject something that will cause inflammation, the short-term inflammation. After that, to reduce, it depends what is our idea, what is our aim. And the main is to know and to understand. There is no bad or good thing. There is just understanding of them or misunderstanding. And if we know everything about hyaluronic acid, if we know what will cause the different lengths of chain, we can play with this and we can achieve the best result. Also, uh, we were trying to inject and there was short period of uh, the injection of the devices that have not just hyaluronic acid, but hyaluronic acid and something. And among all that something, we have found that one of the best is to inject not just pure hyaluronic acid, but to inject hyaluronic acid with succinic acid. And that makes sure give the great result. Why? Let us discuss what is succinic acid. We all understand, it's, it's really very simple, that any pathological condition in the body is directly or indirectly associated with ischemia and tissue hypoxia. And even, well, 
we, we, we know that when we are working, when we are sitting and working uh, some period of time, after that period, after a couple of hours, we need to stand up, to work, to breathe. Uh, we need to relax. We called it relax. We are not relaxing. We are struggling with hypoxia and, uh, and it looks like we are relaxing. Uh, and we need just a couple of minutes and after that we are ready to work uh, once more. So why? Because, because uh, when there is a risk of hypoxia, there is the accumulation of succinate in mitochondria in our uh, cells, in our tissues. And when the level of succinate is start to be higher, succinic receptors send a signal that hypoxia is growing and there is a risk of ischemia and uh, all our bodies start to struggle with this, it's normal. So let us uh, try to understand that when we have hypoxia, yes, we have the accumulation of the endogenous of our own succinate that is connected with succinic receptors and it caused the expression of the protein GPR91 and it caused that our body start to fight with hypoxia. So if in, we will try in the normal condition to inject some medical device, some product with succinic acid, what we will have, we will cause that there will be the big quantity of the exogenous succinate. And it will also connect with succinic receptors. So there is no hypoxia, but we modulate the situations that our body uh, start to think that the hypoxia begins and start to fight with that hypoxia. There is no hypoxia, but our bodies, our tissues start to fight with hypoxia and they start to, they, they, they start to be prepared to the bad conditions, to hypoxia conditions. And what it caused as a result, the increasing of the hypoxia resistance. It means that when the bad times will start, we will be ready. Uh, so how it works, I mean succinic acid, but well, the best is when succinic acid is connected with hyaluronic acid, two acids together. How it works in the tissues. One mechanism I have described you, this is the struggle with hypoxia. And, the, but there are some other mechanism. It's, well, the uh, reducing of the level of the inflammatory, pro-inflammatory mediator, such as TNF, such as interleukin 1, 12, 6. It's growing of the level of anti-inflammatory interleukin 10, what we were starting to talk about. And one more very important thing. This is the growing of the vessel and the telial growth fact. Why it is very important. I will explain you about this in the next slides. Uh, well, in general, because the quantity of vessel start to grow and it caused the new angiogenesis and it caused the wound healing in the experiment. So it caused the uh, renewing of our tissues, of our skin in the real life. Also, it have the influence on the cell growth through fibroblast and on matrix production. But why the uh, narrowing of the vessels, the acceleration of the vascular repair is very important for us, not just from the scientific point of view, but also from the very simple uh, everyday life point of view. I will try to explain. But before I want to tell you about uh, two works, two scientific works, 
here you you can see the one. It was the uh, cited by chemical substantiation of the remodeling action uh, of uh, succinic containment in the skin. There were injection of the uh, combination hyaluronic and succinic acid of the pure hyaluronic acid of the pure and succinic acid and uh, injection of the peptides. And what we have at the end, here we can see the histology and we saw how the quality of the skin start to grow. Here you see the combination of succinic and hyaluronic acid. This is control, this is just hyaluronic acid, just succinic acid. Well, uh, and what we uh, received at the end. Well, the control, <laughs> control was pure because it was just saline. The injection of the pure succinic acid caused the growing of all the, of the fibroblast proliferation plus 73%. The injection of just hyaluronic acid cost plus 100%, so twice. And the injection of the uh, medical device that, con that have contained hyaluronic acid and succinic acid cause the uh, improving plus 182%. It's probably three times more. Uh, so we saw that the combination works much better than succinic or hyaluronic alone. Uh, and there was the big, the great influence on the macrofacts. And we know there is so-called aging macrofact theory that there are old pro-inflammatory macrofacts and there are a new or renewed anti-inflammatory macrofacts. And here you have the visualization of this theory. Uh, so, and there was one more work it was finished um, well one month ago so you are the first who see the result of this work uh, here you see the injection of hyaluronic acid 15 milligram per cc with oligopeptide 72 analog and there were also uh, vitamins and um, amino acids and also cells well i don't know they are there or not, but at least the company producers, the producer tell us that this, uh, this device that you saw on the left side of the screen have all this. And let us believe. And the other group, we were injecting succinic and uh, hyaluronic acid called Celeriderm, uh, one and eight percent, because we have different types of celery derm, one and one percent, one and eight and two and two percent. What means that percent? This is the quantity of hyaluronic acid because the quantity of succinic acid in all the products is stable, it's one and six percent. So, and uh, all our patients, all the groups uh, were analyzed on the uh, Vizia before and after through the function true skin. So patient 20 years old, young girl, when we were injected on one side, it was, uh, the study was not head to head, it was split face. And we understand that for such kind of study, split face is better because uh, we have the influence of different substances on the one face of one patient, but different sides of the, uh, of the face. So before was 20 years old and after was 20 years old. Uh, I mean, from the point of view of the true skin age function. And where on that side where we in injecting, where we injecting celery derm, before was the same 20 and after was 17. So in two weeks, we achieved the result minus three year even in the girl since 17 years old. Uh, well, but when we take the patient 46 years old, in two weeks the same with peptides, 
there was 46, there is 46, there will be 47 later. And uh, on the site where we inject in acceleroderm, uh, and due to the type of the skin, we decide to inject to all of them, one and eight, but it can be also one and nine, one and one, or it can be two and two. It, de it depends on the type of the, uh, of the morphotype of the phase. And I will explain about this later. In two weeks, we achieved the reducing of the age of the visible age for six years. So was 46 is 40. And this was just after two procedures. So you can just imagine what will be the result after six procedures. And do you remember, I have talked a couple of minutes ago about the new vessels and that it is very important for us or for our patient to have the influence of the new vessels appearance. And you know why? Because on this picture, on these pictures, you can see that here, this patient, well, there, is, there are pictures before, after, or maybe not before, after, just a picture, a picture of one patient and photo of the other patient. And the difference between these two photos and these two photos are just two weeks. And here, she looks better than here. And here, she looks also better than here. What means better? She is not more beautiful, or she is not, uh, even she is not younger because just two weeks and nothing was done. She is more attractive. She is more sexy. Why? Because these right photos, these are photos that were made during the ovulation and left two weeks in distance. And during the ovulation, a lady is ready to be to start to be pregnant. And this is made by nature, by God, yes, that during the ovulation, a woman should be more attractive than in the other period of time to show to the male that, okay, I'm ready to be pregnant and to have baby in some period of time. Uh, this is like instinct. And why, she, why they are more attractive? Because when there was made the analysis of the skin color, here we have the movement, the very light, slight movement of the skin color to the red area. And because during the ovulation, the quantity of vessels and the diameter of vessels is a little bit bigger than all other period of time. And it makes lady more attractive. And well, this is not that we, uh, we decide that it should be. This is something that we just have described. We find this, we describe this, but it is, and it was 10 years ago, it was 100 years ago, and even more, it was two and 10,000 years ago also, that during the ovulation, ladies start to be a little bit more attractive than all other period of time. I'm not talking about beautiful, I'm talking about attractive. Sexy, and uh, it was this. It was uh, well. It, 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 it is, and it was many thousand years before us, and it will be after us because this is normal. That some signs have to go from the visible uh, view to the other uh, to, to well from ladies to male. Uh, and it was when it was described, uh, there were some experiments, for example, with the color of lipstick. This is the original photo. And these are the photos where just the color of lipstick was changed and the contrast. And 
uh, it was described what kind of photos start to be much more attractive or what kind of face of the same face start to be more attractive and what less attractive. And it depends on the quantity of the red color in the lipstick just. Also the same as with brightness, even with darkening and lightening, just darkening and lightening of eyes and lips, the attractiveness can grow or go down. And when we are injecting solar derm, for example, in the area around the eyes, we can make it more light if we have dark cycles. We can uh, struggle with edema when we have edema due to the lymphodrenetic effect, we can um, have the good result. And our aim is just to find what kind of cell we have to inject to this or to the other patient. Excel one and one, Excel one and eight, or two and two, it depends on the type of aging. But in general, what we are doing, it's called redermalization with Xoriderm is the proven improvement of the quality uh, of the skin by increasing its regenerative potential. And why we achieve this? Due to the double synergic effect, due to the, uh, because still have in their content, uh, hyaluronic acid, two and a half million Dalton, and succinic acid, and the um, percentage, the quantity of succinic acid is the uh, same in all the products because it's found that the uh, quantity 1.6% is the most effective quantity of succinic acid. And the treatment course should be three, four sessions, uh, procedures every second week. Well, one time per two weeks. But from my own experience, I know that it can be even done every week. We can do every seven days and we will achieve good results. Even we will achieve it much faster. But if we really want to achieve the really stable and good results for the period of eight, 10, 12 months, it's necessary to inject five to six. Uh, well, it's necessary to do five to six procedures with the one week uh, interval. And we achieved a really good, perfect, wonderful result. And our patients start to be uh, much more attractive, younger, healthy. Mm, what we can treat? We can treat face, neck, decolletage, and hands. And uh, even in the, in the very traditional countries where the ladies are uh, wearing something that covered the hair, that uh, covered the neck, that the collage, okay, the face is open and the hands, the hands are also open. And now we understand that the uh, hands, we can make a very nice face. But if we will forget about hands, one will look and tell oh, yes, the face is done. But I'm looking at the hands and they are old. And even more, the hands have, um, but the, the sun exposure and the sun damage on the face and on the hands, on the hands, it's much more stronger because we are not, when we are trying to cover um, our face to have some barrier from the sun, at least umbrella, yes? With the hands, we are doing nothing. And as I have told, the products can be with various concentration of hyaluronic acid, one and one, one and eight, and two and two, and succinic acid, one and six percent, to solve different skin problems. Uh, it's patented technology. And as I have told, we have biorevitalizing agent, it's hyaluronic acid, and we have redermalization acid. It's succinic acid. And uh, when we are using that combination of hyaluronic and succinic acid, we achieve much better and much more stable results than when we are using 
these are just using hyaluronic acid. Here you can see also some results of ginger in 1% concentration. It's lightening of the skin by one to turns. It's reducing edema. It's reducing on the eye cycles and elimination of the signs of fatigue. Well, uh, these are results with one at eight percent. And here are results with two and two percent. So uh, also what we can do. All our patients, they want to have the immediate result, yes? It means that you have inject and she need to be younger and better exactly after the end of the procedure. Nobody wants to wait one, two, three, four, five, six weeks. She come to you and tell, okay, doctor, I have come here. I will pay to you for the procedure and I have to be young and beautiful immediately. So uh, for such patients, I have, uh, I have um, created a very special technique and you can use it and you can use it with axillary derm. It, it will be really great to use it with axillary derm. It's called double seven lift. Uh, why double? Because double synergic effort. Why seven? Because seven end points of injection. And why lift? Because at the end of the procedure and the best is to show to the patient half of the face. At the end of this procedure, you will have the immediate lifting of the face. And when you will inject one half and you will show her the difference, she will tell, wow, uh, by the way, at that moment, you can tell, yes, you know, darling, but the price was just for the half of the face. If you need one more half, you have to pay twice. <laughs> well, it was a joke, but um, how it should be made. This is the entry point. And the place of entry point, there is no matter where, just you have to take into account, you have to do this with cannula, and you have taken into the account the length of cannula because the diameter of the cannula, from my experience, it should be bigger than 22, 21. The best is 18. Why? Because you will have no any trouble with cannula, with uh, diameter 18. But okay, 21, 22 also can be. And the length, Cause where you will have the entry point here or here. If you have cannula 90 millimeters, you can choose any kind of the entry point because from that entry point with 90 millimeters, you will uh, you will have the ability to, to go to every end point. With 70, you, you will be necessary to uh, find more carefully the right entry point. And with 50, you will have the necessity to make two entry points, one for the upper part and one for the lower part, because with 50, you will not have the ability to go from the one entry point to all the seven uh, end points. So what are the end points? One, it's temporal area. Two, it's the lateral forehead area here. So temple lateral forehead under the eye infraorbital, but not to all the patient. If the patient have the, the ability to have the edema under the eye, better not to inject this, this end point, just this set end point. Next is school bone. Next is under the corner of the lip, under the modiolus, yes. Well, this is the end point where there is the place of the fixation of the musculus depressor anguli oris to the mandibula. And the last but not least end point is the corner 
angle of the mandibular. So you are injecting the quantities. And when you will inject those quantities, and after that, make the light massage up and lateral, up and lateral. All this, it's three minutes, yes? To make the entry, the entry point to put 0, 2, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 2, light massage. And you will have the immediate lifting of the half of the face. And at that moment, you are showing to your patient that you have just made the procedure with acceleroderm. Depends on the type of the skin. It can be from one to one to two to two. Uh, and she saw the immediate lifting and she started to be happy. One more thing, <coughs> when you are using cannula, especially cannula 22, cannula 18, you will have no uh, hematomas. So she will be also happy. She received the procedure. She saw the lifting, no hematomas. She is ready to be beautiful and young immediately after the procedure, what she won before. So, and as I have told you that different products are for the different morphotypes. When we have thyroid morphotype, we are using one and one or one and eight. And just after the set procedure, we can use two and two. When we have deformative morphotype, and by the way, thyroid is one of the um, most, uh, well, it, this is the morphotype that is, uh, can be met in such countries as Indonesia for the most. It's thyroid morphotype. On the second place is deformative. You will never meet wrinkling morphotype in uh, Indonesia or other thousand countries. And for sure, it will be hard to find the muscular morphotype because muscular, it's more uh, typical, for example, for Japanese people or Korean people, not just for them, but much more for them. And in such countries in, as Indonesia, I have told you, the, the most uh, immediate is thyroid. On the second place is deformative. But as you can see, you can use for both of them starting from one to one, one and one, through one and eight, and finalizing with two and two percent ciliary derm. Well, uh, about morphotypes, it's necessary to read one more big lecture because there are different kind of types uh, of aging and there are different types of classification. Maybe when I will be one time uh, in Indonesia, I will uh, share my knowledge about all this, about type of aging, about the process that are going, about uh, what is necessary to inject because we understand that not just xiloxiroderm is perfect product, but not just xilo should be injected and where and what and how we can inject to those patients. And what I want you to know is that this combination, your run case and succinic case in two years ago, you see in 2018, it was awarded on the in World Congress in Monaco, the Congress of Aesthetic Medicine, it achieved anti-aging beauty and trophy of art. And uh, well, I think it's really serious. And there is no analogs for such product. And novel allergic reactions were um, reported. And there are just a couple of contraindication and post-procedure recommendation. Well, contraindication, we all know, yes, pregnancy and lactation. I don't know is it or not, but nobody have made any examination how it works, so better not to inject when lady is pregnant or have lactation. Somatic disease in the compensation stage. But if one have some, uh, some disease in the study of the compensation, she, he will never come to us as a patient because the person have much more stronger problems. 
uh, uncompensated diabetes. Uh, well, autoimmune disease, especially in the decompensation uh, stage. Well, uh, blood clotting disease, multiple skin neoplasm, herpes in active form. I mean, just inactive because we all know that at least 80 or I think even 90% of the population, they're infected by herpes. So we are talking just about the active forms and some uh, psychoneurological disorders. And what are post-procedure recommendation? It's to avoid, avoid strong sun exposure during two weeks as with any other injection procedure and to avoid uh, heating procedures such as sauna or something else uh, for during two weeks after. But it seems to me that in Indonesia, sauna is not the most popular procedure. <laughs> well, and, 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 and what we have. And here we have all my contacts. It's WhatsApp, Viber, Emo, Telegram, WeChat, and some else, well, I, I will check because maybe I have forgot. So line also, signal also, means everything, all the messengers that are also popular in the uh, Southeast uh, Asia. Uh, on my phone, this is my Gmail, Facebook, Messenger, and Instagram. You can follow me, you can ask any question, you can ask for any help, what you need. I'm always trying to help my colleagues. And now, now what we have, and now we have 15 more minutes for questions and answers, yes? Yes. So thank you for your kind attention. I'm ready to, to answer your questions. Thank you, Dr. Alexander, for your interesting presentation and clear, and it's new insight uh, about the succinate acid and hyaluronic acid to look younger even in two weeks. It's uh, yes. and, and thank you and thank you for sharing the newest uh, study that you share. Thank you and we are the first seeing. <laughs> uh, in the chat live chat, I have uh, one question from Dr. Nancy. Yes. Hi, Doc. It I was my been... honor and respect to you to, to present yes. to you first, that nobody <laughs> else has seen them before. Yes, thank you. It's the honor. <laughs> thank you. Dr. Nancy asked, Doc, can succinate treat hyperpigmentation? Of course, in Indonesia, it's a big issue about the hyperpigmentation melasmite. So uh, can the succinate acid treat the uh, hyperpigmentation? Yes. Yeah. Yes, great question. Thank you very much. Yes, well, it depends. It depends what is the reason mm -hmm. of the hyperpigmentation. But uh, because sometimes the reason is such that we, we, we can't treat it at all. But normally, if we have post sun exposure or connected with the area of living, yes, uh, the uh, combination of hyaluronic acid and succinic acid, this is one of the best what we can use for the treating of the hyperpigmentation, for sure, it should be not just this. Uh, it should be not just solariderm because, well, we understand that uh, hyperpigmentation, this is the process that connected with different uh, things, but for sure, it should be included in the uh, protocol of the treatments and we will have much better and much faster results than without accelerator. Yes, thank you. And in your yeah. presentation, uh, I see the uh, the in inlet point of the cannula and inject a seven point for targeting. Uh, it's according to lymphatic dryness or or what? That's uh, yeah. its purpose. Oh no 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 no! It, it mm -hmm. was it was designed by me just oh, with the yes. I, with the idea with the idea this this uh, scheme you see it mm -hmm. yes no on the screen or not? Uh, if it's possible to to show us one more the scheme, 
uh, I have on the laptop now, and I hope that our audience will also have the possibility to see it. But the idea of describing was not due to the lymphodrainage or something else. It was just the possibility to inject in such way to have the lifting. Mm -hmm. And uh, because our patient want to see the immediate result. And with such scheme, we will have the immediate lifting of the face. like, And she start to be happy. Uh, and okay, this lifting, it's uh, for with silver dermis for two, three weeks. But this is enough until the next procedure will be. So the patient is happy because she she, she, she saw the result immediate. Yes, we, we will have the result of the uh, silver derm. We will have a little bit uh, after, but our patient is interesting to have the immediate result. With this scheme, we can uh, we can sh give them the immediate result. So they're happy, we are happy, everybody is happy. Okay, thank you. And uh, in hyaluronic acid in this uh, preparation is non crystalline, non crossling, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Non crossling. Yes. It's interesting. It's not filler. <laughs> it's not filler. It's biorevitalizant. Mm -hmm. The hyaluronic mm -hmm. acid is non crossling. Mm -hmm. Because the crosslink uh, hyaluronic acid have totally different uh, influence on the skin and on the functions of the skin, but we are talking uh, well. The main our, our main aim with injecting cell is the redermalization. It's the making skin visibly younger, and as I've shown in that last uh, clinical study. Uh, and it is not even published, not in one magazine, because now we are preparing the article. As I have shown, we, we, we achieve this aim, we achieve this result, and our patients start to work young, start to look younger. And uh, well, with the crosslink uh, uh, hyaluronic acid, we can achieve uh, some other results, but this is the, the, the topic of the other lecture. Yes. Thank you. And what plan uh, do you inject in the succinate acid? In subcutaneous Sorry? or intradermal? Uh, what plan? Uh, mm -hmm. which, which layer? Yes, well, which layer? I, I'm, always inject, uh, I'm always injecting such uh, kind of um, products. I'm always injecting in the uh, superficial mm -hmm. white adipose tissue, in the superficial fat pads, mm -hmm. uh, because it's very important to inject all these things, not uh, uh, sub-epidermal, not, so, uh, not, uh, not in the derma, but into the sweat uh, due mm. to the um, uh, possibility of influence because uh, our aim is to have the main influence on the superficial white adipose tissue, not on the dermal adipose tissue, divat not on the uh, deep uh, fat, but on the superficial white adipose tissue. And due to this, we can switch on all the processes of the neocollagenogenesis on the influence on the fat, on the derma, on the uh, visible age and, uh, and also. And this is also the, the, the other topic of the lecture. <laughs> of course. <laughs> It's, yes. yeah, thank you. It's uh, um, and there is no question in the chat box. And uh, Dr. Alexander, it's succinate acid. As I know, it uh, it's also the anti acne ingredient. It's safe to treatment uh, patient with acne with this. Well, if we have the mm -hmm. patient with the active acne. Mm -hmm. with the active elements. Um, as a dermatologist, I am strongly against any injections. I think that first we have to treat acne and the best uh, product for the treatment of acne is isotretinoin, systemic, yes, retinoids, systemic retinoids. And after we have treated the active acne, we can talk about other type of treatments. If we have the active elements, I'm strongly against any kind of injections. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, there's, I think it's a very interesting presentation and I'm so glad to uh, hear the, for the founder and the 
original product from you, Dr. Alexander. Thank you. Can you, can you give us the take home message of, for audience to close your, your presentation? Mm, well, my, my, my short map. <laughs> yes, uh, well, my, my, my short message is that uh, mm -hmm. we all are working, all, all of us who are working in the industry of beauty, we have to do everything to make our patients younger, uh, more happy, and we can do this, uh, well, the, the Xyloriderm is the perfect uh, product that can help us to do all this, doesn't matter which kind of Xylo, one, one and one, one and eight, two and two. But what we have to remember that there is no any magician product. And as the question was, yes, about acne, we have to remember that we are doctors. And if we are doctors, we have all, all the time we have to think, we have to use the proven techniques, we have to use the proven products, we have to find the evidence base. And uh, in this situation, if we will do all this, everything will be okay and i hope that during my presentation i have shown you that silver derm is the product with the big uh, scientific evidence yes thank you dr alexander for your thank wonderful you. time thank you and may you thank always you. be in good health happiness during this pandemic see you another time and we'll see you in bali maybe thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs> okay thank you oh, yes bye bye Bye-bye. Now, dear audience, we will continue for the next interesting presentation about skin nutrition after this commercial break. Welcome back. The next presentation again is interesting topic today, biorevitalization, and it will be delivered by Dr. Valerie Philippon from Paris. Here with us, Dr. Valerie. Are you there, Dr. Valerie? Yes. yes. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good morning in Paris. Good morning. Yes, it is nine o'clock at the moment. Yes, I'm very proud to be your moderator today. We've met in Imkas, yeah. Yeah, I'm very happy to be with you, yeah. honestly. Thank you. Uh, it's the last year, exactly one year from Imkas Paris, yeah. It's, exactly. Yeah, one year passed by, and now we're here in virtualized one. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Okay, thank you. And to know more about Dr. Valerie, we will share her curriculum vitae. Dr. Valerie, Doctor of Medicine, University Claude Bernard in Lyon, France in 1989 and 1980 MBA École Superior de Management in Lyon, France in 2006 in University Degree in Nutrition in Dijon, France and 2012 in University Degree Filling and Injection at Paris Descartes at Paris, France. At 2012, um, university degree anti-aging morphological medicine, Paris. And 2015, gynecology aesthetic diploma, University Paris Gretel at France. As professional experience since 2014, she's in Filorga, medical communication manager. Now, please welcome Dr. Valerie. The time will be yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
So I'm very enthusiastic to present you one of my favorite topics, both in terms of conference, but also in my practice. That is to treat quality of skin, because I think that today it's one of the most requested demand from patients. And whatever the other procedure in aesthetic can be, either laser, surgery, peelings, biovitalization is a pre-requested for any other kinds of injections before or after, even toxin of whatever. Because it is like a good nutrition for health, it's good nutrition for skin. And for me, most than ever, uh, we, we should today provide our patient with this kind of results. So my topics will be first uh, concerned with them. Um, I can go. Uh, ah, can you? Sorry. How can I do? I want to go further. You know, I can't take a, I can't go. You can go to the next slide. Yes, oh, next slide. It works. It locks, yes. Can you do it for me? Ah, thank you. No, it doesn't work. How can I go to next slide? I have to go to next slide, Dr. Kisanti, but I can't from me. Yes, I will ask the... Because in fact, uh, Sijit uh, has the control of my... Uh, maybe I should... Uh, oh, yes. Now... Uh, when we're talking about quality of skin, what does it mean? In fact, it's after health, the skin, good appearance. Texture is something that's very important. Um, tonicity, gluey, baby skin, homogeneity, even toning, something also very important. And to feel hydrated and comfortable is uh, belonging to skin quality. And more than ever now with the, you know, the COVID and the mask, uh, we have to take into account that healthy skin is part of the daily routines. Quality of skin concern any age, any generations, from millennials to baby boomer, and also for um, our activities, something very important and interesting and relevant in terms of business. Uh, millennials, more than ever, even more than the baby boomer, are concerned by skin quality, and uh, they are very willing to have uh, perfect skin. Uh, education of the aging process is something also very um, updated in all the digital media and people are aware that more than the genetically and the age, there is some hormonal variations that can uh, concern skin, new aging also, repetitive movement, and there is also some extrinsic aging factors as we know, sun, tobacco, pollution, stress, illness, lack of sleep. So healthy skin is part of healthy life and lifestyles. So healthy skin is part, I would say, of a general aspect of the body. Uh, I think it's very important to take time with our patient to explain how skin is uh, built and the needs of understand that skin layers need different treatments. Superficial layers, the epidermis is very sensitive to cosmetics and also to peelings. Dermis is very sensitive to injections, lasers, medium peelings, adipocytes, more sensitive to uh, any surgery, and uh, uh, <clears throat> muscles to Botox and bones to uh, even injections. What happened with aging skin? First of all, you can have the aspect of the epidermis that gets thinner, get drier, with modes of uh, activities of melanocytes that will provide some loss of homogeneity, even spot. So dermis will also get thinner. That's why more and more the wrinkle will appear and uh, the adipocytes are getting heavier and with the sagging of age will provide what we call slackening. So age adipocytes uh, versus young adipocytes, it's very important to understand that the age adipocytes have lost their capacity of stretching. And when we 
talk about the stretching of capacities, the capacity, you know, to provide good collagen and uh, to have a good metabolic activities. And with age, the collagen decrease, so the skin become dry and rough, the elastic crease, so the fine lines and the wrinkles occur and the quantity of urine acid decrease. And so loss of tonus and less plump skin and blemishes. That's why from stretch to collapsed adipose uh, fibroblast explain what occurs in aged skin. So why, how can we provide a reverse section with NCTF? NCTF is very unique. It has a unique formula of biorevitalization based on free nf acid, which is very important. There is two concentrations, either 5 milligram, either 0 0.5 milligram, with 59 ingredients. It is devoted to many parts. It's not for talking about the face, but today to talk about healthy skin, it's not just the face. It's also the neck, the decolletage, and the end. And it's very important also to take into account the ends and the neck and decolletage, because if you feel unbalanced treatments, it won't fit like if it was, how would I say, uh, good harmony. So now we also start more and more to uh, very uh, earlier to start with the, the treatment of neck and decolletage, and we will go through this presentation. I want just to make a specific, uh, uh, how would I say, focus, on the essential ingredients you can find in the NCTF. First of all, 24 amino acids. Inside these 24 amino acids, you have the eight essential amino acids, you know, the principles. That's very important to build and rebuild collagen, new collagen and elastin. 12 vitamins, mainly also the antioxidant like vitamin C and I, but also all the vitamins of group B, which are very important, you know, for the metabolism, and the retinol vitamin A. There is also coenzymes, DNA reparation nucleosides, and the most important antioxidant agents, which is the glutathione. That's why you can say that these unique and exclusive formulations will help the fibroblast to be re-stimulated. Something very important is also to talk about the CD44 receptors that is on the membranes and the fibroblasts because the urinary sac, you know, will fit in and will auto stimulate, you know, its own synthesis. So the fibroblasts is the key cells, really the most important cells in the dermis that will provide new dermis and will be, uh, how would I say, responsible for all these. Uh, reverse activity. We do have a very nice presentation in Preknenko that uh, really will emphasize the fact that NCTF will be the ideal ecosystem to reduce the aging fibroblast and provide, you know, an ideal environment of nutrition so it can be able to rebuild synthesis of collagen and elastin. Now it is scientifically proven in in vitro study with more than 180% fibroblast stimulations. Due to that, we will increase the synthesis of collagen by 256 and decrease the percentage of free radicals, which is uh, responsible, you know, for the antioxidant by 90%. Based on this, Clearly, we can say that there is a double benefit to treat with NCTF, which is first to target the cause of aging, but also to correct the signs of aging. But to correct the signs of aging, it will depending on the way you inject the NCTF. And that's why we will have different way of injections depending on density with the intradermal specifically. And you know, on the jawline, which is very interesting, 45 degree for the wrinkles. I would say the fine riddles for the homogeneity of the tones, for the hydrations, the reduction of pore size, and the radiance. What is unique also is NCTF, it's the way it is presented. There is five vials in the boxes, you know, whereas in these boxes, uh, everything is prepared to make the injection easier. There is the 18 gauge, you know, to prevail the product, 
the 30 gauge for the epidermic injection, the 32 gauge for the uh, intradermal uh, injection, and there is a syringe of 3 ml because each virus is 3 ml. We're going to talk about the quantity to deliver. If you want to do the face, 3 ml is enough. If you want to do face, neck, and decollete, you will need two vials of 3 ml. There is a proof of authenticity because there is no meat for drugs. And you can have also, and we will see later in the presentation, the nanosoft to do injections too. The protocol, ideal protocol, is to have five sessions. Five sessions first for initiate, two sessions for repair, one session for stabilized. And uh, these uh, five sessions, ideally in a mature woman, have to be done twice a year. That's also very important. Once you initiate a protocol of NCTF and you do not have to cut it down, you have to explain your patients that the skin's renewal is, how would I say, a, um, a working progress and you have to maintain it over the time. Something also very important with NCTF that uh, I uh, realized and the patients also, even when you do some other procedures, it will maintain the other procedure longer. And that's normal because it will help the dermis, you know, to be uh, stronger and better quality. So it will really have an overall enhancement of all what the other procedure and aesthetics. Now, for NCTF, which is one of the latest, uh, how would I say, one, um, it has 40 years old, and it, there is lots of clinical evidence, proofs of both efficiency, but also very good tolerance and very well acceptance. So that's also very important today to work with a very safe and experienced product. There is many device adapted um, to all target. I think that the best device is the one you feel the more comfortable with, but you can also, you know, combine different kinds of device. First of all, there is a superficial multipuncture with a 30, 32 gauge. You have also the micro needle uh, stimulation with either 0 0.5 to 1 millimeter, but you have also the micro needling stimulation with 0 0.5 to 2 millimeters. But you have also the automatic injection with the mesogen and the nanosoft. Uh, the multi layer injection techniques is very important because, as far as you target all the layers, you will have better efficiency. And somehow people said it doesn't work, maybe because it's not the good product, neither the good quantity, but more than that, not the good way of injection. Best way of injection, I will show you in this film. I hope it will work. So. technique, you know, very important. So it is very superficial. And you go across all the, all the face, you know, and even if it remains superficial, it will just create some multipuncture. And after with a massage, you will be able to make penetrate, you know, all the injections. Then after you will use a 32 gauge for the fine wrinkles, creating some very fine papula. It is very interesting, you know, for uh, the CrossFit, for example, but also all the pore size. You create some wide papilla, just, you know, very superficial, and the product will penetrate. And uh, <clears throat> that's what I mean, the intradermal, you know, for the neck, which is uh, very important also. And uh, even in this millennial, she's 27, it's interesting. You can have exactly the same kind of result with the nanosoft, which we will talk after, which is some three nanoneedle of 36 millimeter. Very interesting because it will provide some predictable, how would I say layers, targets the dermoepidermic junctions and without any bruise, it goes very quickly. You just have to, how would I say, respect, you know, <coughs> three main uh, point of injections, that is to say, 
the blue lines in front of you and 45 degrees and just to press the pressure on the plunger, not on the syringe. Then after you will always put a recovery cream in order, you know, to uh, make penetration of the NCTF. Then after there is a roller injection, which is also another way to uh, provide. Uh, <clears throat> so you can do a peeling before, you know, to make it uh, uh, like here it was a bright peel, which is made of gluconolactone, phytic acid, citric acid. I like to do some superficial peeling, you know, before injection, because it's very interesting also to make it penetrate. And after what you will do, you will just deposit some fine, you know, drop of NCTF, you know, like this. And after, with the roller, you know, you will gently go across in every direction to make it penetrate. You will not insist on the zone of bones because it could uh, make some irritation, but like this, it will penetrate very easily and you will have very nice results, both on hydration, wrinkles, homogeneity. People like it very much. And it's very easily, uh, uh, what I say, it's very easily to practice. You have to repeat this three times, <clears throat> spaced out of three weeks. So you just deposit some drops and after you will provide it, you know, with rollers to make it penetrate. So you do not need any needle. And depending the grade, even for acne scars, you can use some one millimeter to two millimeter needles in order to be more update. I like to make a message to make it penetrate, you know, after and to make it perfectly. Okay. And then after always to put some uh, recover cream. Sometimes you can do a lead also after it will enhance the results and people like it. So NCTF, if I can make a conclusion, it's for any age from millennials to a uh, mature woman. Uh, it's, uh, you can use it in single use, respecting the protocols of five sessions. And it's also very good for patients that are reluctant to fill the um, other's uh, procedure. Uh, you can combine it with any AT engine procedures and you can also use it more than never in maintenance. Nanosoft. Uh, I think it's a device which is really interesting and that really provide an added value of injection of this kind of biorevitalization product. Things important to say it is devoted to very delicate area due to uh, the fact it is some three nanoneedle of 0.6 millimeter. It's uh, correspond to 30 ga 36 gauge needles. So it has to be first uh, uh, positioning for all the periocular area for the neck and the decolletage. It is a real specific device from Filmed and it can be, uh, uh, how would I say, fixed on any kind of syringe and it provides some more accurate and targeted uh, segments. It has an optimal design and the blue lines, this is very important, as always to be fixed in front of your eyes when you inject. Of course, it is C marked. So I want to present you this film, which is very important to see how to inject it. Because in fact, even if it sounds easy, you need to have some three key rules to make it efficient. First, you have to remove the cover and to fix the micro needle on any kind of syringe. Then always to provide the blue lines in front of your eyes. Once you've done it, okay, you will remove the cover and you will let the drop, you know, just like this. And then what is important, you know, will be to maintain in your fingers always 20, 45 degrees and then go across the line. 
and you go across the line, deposit some small papula. First of all, you go in the line, okay? And this papula will remain from 20 minutes to two hours, it depends. Very interesting also for the crossfit. So what you should do, always the blue line in front of you, 45 degrees and some little drop. What you should not do, and like this, that's very important. And uh, what you should not do is to put the blue line not in front of you, because if not, the needle will not penetrate inside. So to use another degree of injection, you know, and also to press too much the syringe because you will not leave the product outside. If you respect this free procedure, it's very easy. You save time, you are more efficient, and you avoid bruise and pain. So this is uh, proposed, and this is the kind of papula you will have. And according to me, it's really changed, you know, the management of the peri uh, ocular region and the neck and decolletage. And here you can see the difference where you place the NCTF in between NanoSoft, just at the demo epidemic junction, and the classic needle, which is in the dermis. And that's why you can have more elasticity and tonicity and to create more new collagen. And in this split phase study, where you have nanosoft versus, you know, needle, we will have the results very soon of difference of uh, uh, rapidity of efficiency after three sessions based out of three weeks. So mainly, what are the recommendations? It's standardized depth of injection. It's nearly painless and there is no bruise. So best result in less time, and specifically for this delicate area of the lower eyelid where we didn't have any things before, look at the result just one month after the session. I want to show you also the end injection, which is something very interesting, because end injection is something we, we tend to uh, do um, as of with uh, feeders, honestly, in order to create more pumple, but in superficial, you can use also NCTF. And this is very interesting. Uh, if it works, yes. Okay. And uh, you can use it as uh, you know, first of all, you have a good disinfection. So always do the 30 gauge needle, you know, with the epidermic. And after, when you have some very thin skin, you can also provide, you know, the back of the end like this with some small papula. And honestly, it will be fantastic. And you can even do this procedure after filling with uh, injection of fillers. So I like very much to do this multi-layers approach, you know, for uh, treating the ends, rehydrating. First of all, I will use fillers and then after in superficial injection with NCTF, first the T-gate and then NanoSoft. So after injection, we do have also very nice protocol for uh, the eyes, which it's called Beautify. We know that eye circles classifications is very multifactorial. We can have many topics of wrinkles, pigmentation, vascular structures, and uh, we do have a three-step protocol that is combination of in-cleaning and at-home treatment. If you are uh, the skin perfusion, you know, branch from Filmed. So in-clinic, the first step will be the bright pill. Bright pill is made of gluconolactone, phytic acid, citric acid, and is also dedicated for delicate areas because gluconolactone is very well adapted to sensitive skin. And then after you will inject the NCTF with the nanosoft. After you will provide at home B3 recovery and rich in B3 vitamins, plus the eye recover mask dedicated for eyes. If you repeat it three times, based out of 15 days, you will have fantastic results and it will even help, you know, 
to redensify the dermis. And after, if you need to do more injection with HA, it, you will have better result with less quantity. So that's the peeling complex, which is very interesting, you know, to uh, work on homogeneity helps to make penetrate the NCTF. We have exactly the same protocol for the neck, which is also a very sensitive areas. And neck is more and more, uh, uh, how would I say, an area that is, uh, how would I say, important for people. So we have different kind of neck treatment, uh, take neck lines and establish wrinkles and firmness. And for this, if we have uh, a customized protocol, which two kinds of product, First, when there is no visible signs of aging, but just revitalization and prevention, we will use the NCTF 135HA. Then for the rejuvenation correction, we will use the MHA 10. And it will always point point with the nanosoft, you know. And we will have more hydration, more uh, homogeneity, more density, and at the end, enhancement of skin quality. And even I go very often, you know, here on the mantalis in order to maintain tonicity. So in clinic, it will always be bright pill followed by NCTF and nanosoft and at home B3 recovery. And you know, the B5 Hydra booster, which is very enriched with HA. So uh, the MHA 10, the key points, what is it? It's pure uric acids, very enriched and very good for safety and efficiency. It will provide a 30 milliliter of pure HA per vials because it is a 3 ml and it is a ready to use kit and it is to be used alone or in combination. Okay, so now I want to present you how to inject it. Uh, always, so you will prepare, you know, with uh, your syringe and you will as we've seen, you know, provide the wrinkle here. And after, in between, you know, the line you will put also in the neck and the decolletage, this small papula. And you can go, you know, on the decolletage also. It's not very sensitive and your patient will really appreciate it. In between, you can put also some NCTF 135HA. If you do not have the nanosoft, you can also treat with a 32 gauge. I like very much the 32 gauge of TSK. They are very thin and very relevant, but with the 32 gauge, it will take longer and you have to be cautious in order not to, to do any bruise. So that's the point. The protocol is always the same. So either you will use MHA10 or NCTF or both with bright pill before and spaced always of three weeks. So as summarized, concerning the NCTF, which means new cellular treatment factors was 135 HA, which is five milligram per ml plus 59 ingredient. This is the first certified C marked biorevitalization product with more than 40 years of research and experience in scientific clinics. And it has been uh, a very high notoriety was one of the best, you know, practice during these 20 last years in aesthetics. So now I'm here to answer your questions. Thank you, Dr. Finally, you give us a I very don't hear you. Can you hear me now? Sorry, you, I can't hear you. Yes, thank you. Tess, can you I hear me? I can't hear you. No. Why? Hello. Hello, Dr. Fellery. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you for your presentation. Sorry for interrupting. Um, it's very interesting point of uh, NCTF for treating any age uh, in any area of the skin. Uh, as you mentioned before, it's um, five 
uh, session of the NCTF is the in initial session phase. Is that there are any specific uh, procedure before do it uh, in this initialization? No, there is no. Mm -hmm. There is no uh, preparation for NCTF. What is very important with NCTF is first to uh, explain to the patients that it will not be a one session, but really to keep compliant to the five session to obtain results. Because it's totally different in terms of mechanism of action of HA. You will not have a wow effect like you could have with HA for before and after, you know. It has to be sustainable and uh, incremental results. First of all, hydration and radiance, and then the tonicity, the reduction of wrinkles of pore size, the uh, incremental uh, aspect of density will come later on. And you have to explain that's why how the skin aging process uh, occurs. That's why the, to start a protocol with five sessions is important and after to maintain it with three sessions regularly. Yes. Is any maximum dose uh, in one treatment, in one session? Um, well, uh, usually you use three mL for the face, mm -hmm. three mL for the decoltage. Some, but I would say it's uh, also depending on the assessment of the quality of skin of your patients. If your patients have very bad quality of skin with lots of dehydration, sometimes I put two vials on the face because for millennials one vial is enough for major women when it's very very dehydrated i think it's that it's better to put two vials immediately yes thank you and i saw uh, in the previous video that you sh show us uh, you combine it with the uh, nctf 10 uh, it can be uh, combined with the uh, filler with um, crosslink in the same layer? No. No. MHT10 is free, HA. And as you've seen, we inject it very superficially. If you inject it superficially with a crosslinked fillers, you will have some sustained papula and it will be a disaster. So MHT10 is really free, HA, but you can't inject at these superficial layers. Uh, you know the uh, feelers. It's impossible. Yes. Uh, can we combine it with the toxin uh, according to doing the baby Botox, like uh, diluted with the NCTF? Well, I know that in some country it is done and it is very fashionable. In France, mm -hmm. it is not allowed. So it's dependent on the regulatory law. Yes. But I know some, some, some of my colleagues do it outside of France and with some very nice uh, results. Oh, there's no in contraindicator uh, to do that? No. no. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and this depends on which layer we inject the NCTF and we get a good result. In Indonesia, it's uh, commonly or most of the patient have a uh, melasma and hyper and hyperpigmentation and the strategy to use it the uh, uh, nctf for treating the melasma or hyperpigmentation it's uh, if we do it uh, topically or we just do it in intradermal like you uh, already mentioned both both you can use both but it has uh, been mentioned that it was quite efficient on melasma because, uh, you know, there is some whitening agent in the NCTF, the glutathione first, then the vitamin C, the vitamin E, and the HA. And also, you know, it will impact the inflammations. So it will decrease the inflammation, so decrease the inflammation that is responsible for melasma. So it will help, I would say, on an overall treatment for melasma, and it will provide some things important too. Okay, and how about uh, using NCTF to deeper layer, like um, deeper layer than intradermal, using the cannula? Um, you can use NCTF uh, with mm -hmm. the cannula, of course. It can be also very interesting using the NCTF with the cannula, for example, uh, when you have some acne scars, 
you know, because the use of cannula is very interesting uh, to have an uh, excision aspect. And uh, <coughs> here you can use, for example, and we do have a very nice uh, protocol, the so bioneutralif, when you inject first with a cannula, for example, some uh, reticulated HA like fine lines of universal from art filler range, and then in between the NCTF. And here with the cannula, you can combine both injection of HA fillers and injections of uh, NCTF, but it will be in another layers, you know? Yes. So you have no risk. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, in some case, it's uh, mild, mild uh, prepness or information uh, uh, after injecting the NCTF, how can we reach the erythema and redness? Oh, uh, erythema and redness, there is, uh, first of all, it is very dependent to the skin. There is some skins that are very sensitive and reactive and there is, they will have erythema. Second, it is very depending of the injections you really have to put, you know, the bevel up, not the bevel down. If you put the bevel down of the needle, it will scratch. If you put the bevel up, it will be really much better. That's first as well. So uh, two things to um, decrease the retema. First of all, the repair cream, the B3 recovery is very good. Or mm -hmm. if you have lead, it's also very good. Or even a HA mask, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. But it will... It will uh, remove in less than 20 minutes. Okay, thank you. I think it's um, no other question in the live chat. Dr. Valerie, in your practice, in your experience, uh, is there any case um, during the session of the NCTF is not uh, get a better result or not, not and patient is unsatisfied with the treatment. Sorry, I don't understand your question. Is there some patients that yes. are unsatisfied? Yes, unsatisfied uh, because uh, maybe we, we not explain well. Yes, before. I would say is mm -hmm. totally responsible from the doctors. Yes. Because you don't have to overpromise with NCTF. If you said, oh, you're going to have a blooming skin in one week, it's finished. You will, you will, it's fail, you know. You really have to uh, present it, you know, as something that will enhance gradually uh, the quality of skin. And for my opinion, what I do in my practice, first I explain this, then uh, besides the NCTF treatment, I always prescribe cosmetics, which mm -hmm. is uh, dedicated to the skin concerns. Then very often I do some peeling before, dedicated to the skin concern. And then after, I always do a lot of nutrition and the phytotherapy, naturopathy, you know, trying to understand in which kind of lifestyle is my patients. Mm -hmm. And with this, you know, based on the cumulative effect, she will not be disappointed but you have to be very patient for the three first stations because from the one to the second, she will say, oh, it has been fantastic during two days and after it's go back. And after the second session, you will say, well, it will last one week. And after the third session, she said, ah, I start to see more tonicity. And you have to be very patient and to coach your patients step by step, sessions after session to make her understand that if she's 40 years, it's not with three male products yet you will, you know, change the quality of skin. And I make some very often some benchmark with sports. I say, you're not going to make a marathon if you just train you once a year. If you want to, to run about 40 kilometers, you will have to run one twice a week, every week, every month. And, you know, based on this approach of training, you know, uh, with a sport training, I made the benchmarks with the training of the skin health and the skin cell. And that's make it more understandable for the patients. And this is totally, that's why I said to take in short quality of skins need a lot of explanation and educational communication from our part of doctors to patients to understand that it will take time. But at the end, 
what is fantastic. It will help to have an overall enhancement and also to provide better results on all the other aspects of the skin. Yes. Yes, I agree. That. <laughs> okay. Um, I think it's... Um... There's no more question from the live chat, Dr. Pellery. It's nice presentation of yours. Uh, be good health and be safe in there. I, I'm so glad to have you here. Thank you thank for thank your you presentation. Thank you for your invitation. Yes, yes. Fantastic. Thank you. And uh, yeah. remain safe also and hope to see you soon. Okay. Okay. Bye have bye. a nice congress. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Now, dear colleagues, it's the end of this session today. Uh, don't forget to come again in 15th session of the ISOAM virtual ISOAM 2021. See you next time. Bye-bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.